Can you explain knob settings you typically use on uh, 335? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So, like usually, well, I can't really show you the guitar right now because I'm uh, having some technical issues. But usually I just, um, I go around seven because if, if it's more than seven, it's a little bit too brighty. But right now I kind of like it, so it really depends on kind of what I'm trying to do. You see, that's when I'm like on seven. I also uh, like using the volume knob a lot, so it's just like... You see, I'm, I'm just... Um, I can dig deeper, but it's it's more like a when I use it um, like whenever I play with the band it's a whole other thing So since I don't have another camera right now working, so I'm just gonna sit Uncomfortably like this and uh, sorry. Sorry that you can't see uh, But you can see my face, so I guess it's uh, more personal that way um, I'm I apologize for those who are already tuned in for a while that I will keep saying that I have a new single dropping on Friday. I just really want everyone that is just joining to, to know that. Uh, and uh, you know how it is with music, especially the modern jazz stuff. So you need the support so people actually listen. So if you're watching this and you have like a Spotify playlist or anything like that, so please make sure uh, to, if you enjoy it to, you know, support. Anyway, so um, stuff that I've been enjoying working on and uh, also just answering your questions as, as I see them. Well, basically just like a lot of Bach. So a lot of... Um, of course, there's the more known stuff. The... Which really helps um, also... I've been practicing that with the kind of like hybrid stuff. See? So I'm using the fingers and the pick. Which I also use like when I play chords, like pick, 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 and I end it with some fingers. So, um, so that can be something like... that kind of passage or you can also practice that you see automatically I'm lowering now the volume by the way volume knobs with alternate picking so I, c I keep coming back to Bach because then you can just really focus on the uh, articulation and stuff rather than uh, focusing on you know the, the, like in, in improvisation you kind of focus on like your note choices and stuff but if it's like a set piece and you keep playing it again and again really works your uh, articulation so I've been doing that even slower pieces like um, within the E major partita like the Thank you. 
subtle. And that's the challenge. That's the challenge of that. Small movements really create the uh, being present with every note. Just like the, the, the most subtle movements. Uh, where are you from? I'm uh, from Israel. That's where I live. <laughs> Um, I've heard many people play Bach on nylon string and not many uh, on steel. Yeah, you know, it, it was written for a violin, but, um, you know, basically you can play it on any instrument. It's just uh, beautiful music. And um, so lots of that, lots of the Bach stuff. I've, I've been planning to record the whole 20-minute uh, uh, partita. So that will that will come up soon, uh, hopefully. And to catch you live got to run to rehearsal nice uh, enjoy your rehearsal uh, keep up the great work yes so the single is coming up on Friday it's from my new album um, and the singles name is uh, is py pyramids I just um, there's lots of you'll see it feels like a pyramid right lots of that that kind of voicings in there stuff it's just uh, yeah I don't want to say anything you'll hear it and then you can ask me anything you want about it how to work on your own compositions mm. I can tell you how I work on it. Maybe that will help you. Well, basically, um, it, it, I mean, it changed over the years. I'm just really trying to be very, um, you know, very authentic, I guess, to, to my own feelings. Like, if I feel like I want to create something, uh, kind of like just going for it and not... Um, Sorry. Let me figure out here. The... Here we go. We're back. Yeah. So so composition is 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 creating something that you wish to create, but also understanding that every idea has potential. Da 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 da. Right. Like every idea can be developed. Um. So, sometimes it's just starting from, like, a voicing, you know. Uh, sometimes I learn a tune and just the harmonic progression of that tune, the explorations of that uh, just let me le lead me to kind of, like, ideas. Like, this uh, upcoming single is uh, very inspired by the changes of uh, Invitation. Um, sometimes it's just a feeling, you know, like you go for a walk and like you have, um, kind of like a feeling, but the thing is to embrace, uh, any, any idea you have and, uh, and have like 
you know, take care of it. Like, you know, if, as if you're taking care of a child or, or, uh, or yourself um, and, and embrace your ideas. So, you know, you can have an idea one day of like, whatever, this, and then maybe, it, you know, you just start developing it. I mean, whatever. Right? Maybe that's going to be in your composition. And maybe, maybe you're going to repeat that. Maybe that's going to be an idea that you want to repeat. And maybe now you're starting to like hear kind of like the other instruments, maybe like a groove. That was like a B idea, right? Kind of responds, responding. a surprise like a a break of pep, or of um, a pattern interference I mean it's just embracing stuff and and then you know I do improvise a lot just whatever uh, embracing my ideas and trying to develop them and I guess that also helps like when I need to take compositional decisions um, you know, and, 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 and sometimes it's a rhythmic idea. For example, in my first album, uh, there's this uh, tune K4, K4Y, for y right? The, there's a part go that goes kind of like a... Which is actually triplets. Many people think it's 16th notes. This just came from me practicing uh, conical, like, you know, Indian rhythms and thinking about how I can divide triplets in different ways. And that was, um, I think that was like five, five, five and seven or something. So it was like, um, uh, but I was like not singing every triplet. So it was like, so triplets is like, which is in conical it's like and I was like dividing it like into five but I was wasn't singing the the, the second one so it's ta 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 and then I had seven ta 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 so I got, you know, I just got a, a, that idea. And K, K4Y is one of those tunes which I have a, uh, a bunch of that vibe on the new album, which is more like embracing, like, adventure kind of stuff. You know, like, as long as you keep the energy going, like, anything is kind of welcome in there. It's like a soup, like a, a salad, but, you know, you make it work. So, which is... A lot of that is just inspired by me really liking progressive music, I guess. That's just like kind of like uh, a little bit about composition. During improvisation, if you could give a percentage, how much would be visualization of the neck, triads, arpeggios, and other shapes? Well, you know, if, if you have... <laughs> That was just like me improvising over, just like kind of like a, a, a turnaround. So 
you know, I just came up with maybe that's muscle memory. Right? But I was already thinking about the, the, the voice leading of what I'm doing. The voice leading is always in play. That's why triads are so important because if I go like that's a triad, but if I if I think about the next chord, A, and I want to land on maybe the seven of that A because it's a turnaround. So I want to anticipate. That's that's my landing point, the seven, right? So I want to know that this is a C, and this is an A7, for example, right? Because that's how I know where to land when I do my stuff. You know, that was... But I'm already thinking about D minor now, because that, that's the next chord, so I'm thinking about the five, landing on the five, right? So that's... I mean, if I just put it like as an exercise, you know, like all the practices I have on the on my website on wiseguitar.com. So let's take I, I let's say I take stuff from the third module on Galactic Modern Guitar, the arpeggio stuff that we voice lead there. So so you know we really go into just like voice leading the one six two seven right. One six two. Seven, and that becomes just like stuff like right that becomes like a phrase if you want from the 51 galactic jazz licks the, the vocabulary stuff just because you always see the landing points um, that's why voice leading is kind of you know it's kind of weird like that it's uh, not I mean, it is talking about, but it's just, it could be talked about more. It's just so, so great when you practice voice leading over the tunes that you love. Um, and, 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 you know, in terms of how to do it, you, you just start embracing it. You put it, in, you just invite it to be part of your routine. And you don't need to be too, to be overwhelmed. You can just start with just like a one, four, five progression, just like... <laughs> I know it's it's a, it's a childish and but you start there and and you find your way to more advanced stuff so um, that's like how triads and when you say other shapes so in terms of shapes I have a few directions that I think about so I have um, I mean there's random shapes but they're not random really I mean like this <laughs> Is a is, is a Cilidian with the add nine thing, but but you can associate that to a triad if you want to, and think about it that the root was replaced and that the free was replaced, but it is kind of a random thing. So, if you think about like chords, you can think about that if you know triads, you know, and and you've seen some of my stuff, like or, or you have my courses. So there's a very step by step way of doing all all of those stuff. So, you know, I see the triad, but I can change stuff. I can say like I don't want to have a five. I want to go like major seven, or maybe maybe that's not enough for me. Maybe I don't want to have a three, so I can lower it, and I have this shape. And, and, and now if you know this shape, which you learned through the triads, now you can move it diatonically. And then that means like major, minor, etc. But you're thinking about moving the shape that you created diatonically and then you get those sounds. Which you can associate all kinds of movements to. more. Hey, I bought your course recently, recently and I'm very satisfied. Yay, with all the knowledge you provide. Thanks. Thanks. Um, I'm so happy that you got the course. And uh, all I can say is, wow, I wish I had that when I was trying to figure all those stuff out. And I'm, um, you know, if I, I mean, I'm getting so many great comments about the course and so many people writing me. 
um, I I want to share them. Like I really want to share. Uh, it's also good for me, <laughs> marketing wise. But I also think it's a just really great tool. It's just a it's an awesome tool to have. Um, I even use it when I teach uh, privately. I do accept some private students, uh, so you can also check that uh, on my website. There's like a one-on-one -on -one thing. Um, so then we use the private lessons as a tool to find your own voice. Obviously, I can't tailor-made the course to everyone's style. So the combinations, the combination of the private lessons with the course then I can really, you know, we can really work um, on your particular thing. But anyway, the course goes from triads, arpeggios, voice leading, and then it progresses to more jazz essentials. Tons of uh, bebop examples there. Uh, licks, which is also important. I don't think about them as licks, really. It's more like you learn the fundamentals, so now let's learn a bunch of language. You know, so again, like the example I, I showed, you know, if, if, if I learn C major all over the neck and I really practice it, really practice that thing. So now I have all the different dots that I can start creating stuff with them. Connecting the chord tones with chromatics, creating an instinct of doing so, and and then all this jazz and bebop stuff, it's it's a lot less frightening. Um, many of you probably have that instinct and that's beautiful, but for those of you struggling with uh, playing over changes, so start with just be being very humble with the changes, you know, be very curious about, um, you know, just, just be very curious about the basics and you'll see some magical stuff. You know, it's not only in music that people talk about, uh, celebrating the fundamentals and then you find, you know, there's layers, there's the mechanics of music, but there's also the soul, the spirit, which, um, you know, it's, it's all like one dance. It's like a, you know, like how in an orchestra you have all those different, right? You have the low section, like the bass, and then you have the more soprano, like the, 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 the flutes, and you have the mid range. It's, it's just the same thing with, with knowledge. Like you have the fundamentals, but you have all the maybe approach notes or language, and of course, physical like rhythm and technique. That's a real thing. But you also have soul and and um, and and yeah yeah man like you know we are all students of this crazy beautiful thing gift, so I mean I'm just like you in that regard, absolutely. Rich, I bought your course last month. Learning those triads in module one is taking a while. Any tips for helping to commit all those first shapes to memory? I've got C down. D minor taking a while, B diminished to. Um, okay, memorization takes time. Um, so if you find that it's taking time to memorize it, be grateful for that because you have a challenge now and, and, and um, it's memorizing. But I will say this and it, I also um, say that in the modules always know what you're doing, you can verbalize it. You can go root, third, fifth. Notice where the root is in root position. It's on the low string, right? If I'm on the first, and I repeat myself, I know, but it's important. If you're practicing a first inversion, oh, the root is on the top. And if you're practicing second inversion, oh, where is the root in second inversion? Can anyone let me know in the chat? It's in, it's in, 
Where is the root in first and in, in second inversion? Come on, guys. In the chat. It's in the middle. So now notice those on next set, right? But wait, I'm gonna give you another beautiful tip that is gonna really help you memorize because you're you know one of the ways to learn faster is to base new knowledge on old knowledge. So if you have the major shapes down, right, what are you gonna do now? Make it minor. How? You know where the third is, so you lower it, and that's it. So remember the minor and the diminished as in relative to the major that you have down, right? Major, minor, diminished, all root. If you are in first inversion, same thing. Where is the third in the first inversion? The low note. You lower it. Now you want to make it a diminished? Where is the fifth? You lower it. You see, you're associating everything to major. But you know exactly what's going to happen after a while. You're not going to think about it. You're just going to know it. I heard um, someone say that you don't know what you don't know. But then someone shows you what you don't know. So now, not, now that's a new level. You know what you don't know. But then you learn it and you know it. Which is what you have right now. And then in that stage, there's like frustrations of maybe not being able to memorize it. That, that's that part. Some people leave at that part. Oh, I learned it. Next, let's learn another thing. But there's a problem there. Um, because learning something is not the same as knowing it. Because knowing is a little bit like forgetting you know it. Which is kind of like a, a paradox because then you stop appreciating it <laughs> that you know it. It's kind of like uh, if you earn a certain amount of, um, if you get like a raise or, or whatever, you know. So now you want more. Hope that's helpful. Um, hope you took your notes. Uh, and you can always, you know, in, in the course area, there's a need help button. It's always available. You press it and we can chat in the email. I try to reply at least once uh, a week to everyone. I take a time every week make myself a coffee and, and just enjoy, really enjoy replying. Uh, let's see. I really hope that was helpful. It's a, I know I have long answers. Uh, cage system has helped me a lot when I was learning those stuff. That's beautiful. I find um, that the cage system has good stuff and sometimes it's kind of like l lacking, but I'm not going to preach against anything that is teaching because it's all good stuff. As long as you keep curious and you learn. Uh, Devor, hope I'm pronouncing it right. Just bought your courses, really enjoying it so far. Thank you so much. Um, and people replied, um, where is the root? That's good. Any tips for improving rhythm and timing? Uh, listen to a lot of uh, rhythmic music uh, and try uh, to hum with it. And that can be um, Chikoria for me, uh, very rhythmical player. For example, you know, Spain, right? You know, the, the, this. So that's very rhythmical, and that's if you practice that with the metronome or with the recording, um, and you really try to feel the placement of everything, that's great. So something you can do is you can take one note, let's say you learn Spain, you take only one note and you need to play with that one note the uh, rhythm. <laughs> melody in your mind but you're only using one note to play it and 
you're trying to keep 16th notes as you go as kind of like ghost notes. So it's kind of like boom, bum, beat up, beat up, bum, bum, beat up. Okay. Um, in so think about it like there's layers. The melody has layers, right? It has the notes and it has the rhythm and it has the context, of course. But you're just really, really getting into that rhythm there. Maybe even just improvise, just using that rhythm, maybe just uh, with the G Lydian scale or something like that. So... That's by the way all 16th notes that that rhythm other than that um, learn how to read rhythm um, let's say you have 15 levels so first one will be just like being able to sing quarter notes with a metronome of course but also just being able to feel it like, uh, like da, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two. That's very basic. But also eight notes. And then when you say eight notes, you can say one and two n, because that's really gonna help you um, with knowing when each eight note falls. So that can be something like two n, four n, one n, two n, two n, three n, four n, and if you're reading it, so it's good because you're like you need to respond to what you're reading. And I bet there's so so much uh, resources that you you can read from. Um, and then moving to um, you know sixteenth notes and just constant sixteenth notes and saying one e and a two e and a three and a four e and a. Um, there's other ways of saying that, like in conical you say takademi and stuff, but I don't want to miss. Uh, your uh, your brain right now so you can just practice you know um, by the way I do have YouTube videos about how to practice rhythm so um, you can you can look them up I, I made a few cool ones actually um, so I can talk about rhythm forever so let's do it later I hope that helps uh, let me know if, if, if that helps um, what else uh, do you think of the interval of the notes that you play against uh, each chord when improvising? I think like I think maybe like if if I think about an inter I think like about um if it's if it's a small interval if it's like the sound of inter interval and, and and like you know if I'm in G major again so maybe something like maybe something like that. So I have a second here. And then I have a six, and and then I'm creating stuff stuff with that. Like, but I will say, memorize your octaves, and know also how to see octaves sideways. Right, that's very important. Like being able to see octaves like this way or this way. Um, oh, let me close this. Sorry. <laughs> a very authentic stream today. Um, let me just uh, close this. All right. Anyway. Okay, sorry. So, um, yeah, I do think about intervals, and it's very important to also memorize your fifths. I think that's important. And also know that if you go up, let's say, let's say we let's do it in C, okay? If you go up in an octave from C, it's important to also see that that C and G, right? A fifth up 
is also a fourth down. You see? So also knowing the, re the, the, the reversed interval. So if you're playing, let's say, uh, a major seven, noticing that it's a half step below the root. So if you know your octaves and someone say, hey, play a major seven, and you only know octaves, so knowing that the seven is located beyond, uh, below, a half step below the octave. That kind of stuff is, 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 is also very important for more intermediate beginners, I guess, who can't really see the intervals yet. Visualizing um, octaves, fifths, and then starting to tie other stuff like fourths and stuff like that. I can talk about that a lot more. Uh, what else? Where do you feel the iPhone ringtone? Uh, where do you feel? Oh, you mean the rhythm of it? I think it's like... I think about it as like just from the one. Why do you feel it like maybe maybe on the upbeat? Or maybe on the two? Or maybe maybe like maybe like in seven eight. That, that, I can do that. Jacob Collier can do that. Do you ever use the sweep pick king technique? Uh, I guess I do. Like, probably. Like, I use it in, in combination of stuff. Like, I don't think I... um Like, sometimes I'll go mad, like... Right, maybe in the, in the middle of a jam or something. But usually I just go like um, in the middle, like maybe if I have an F major 7. So maybe stuff like... Uh, up, up, pull, up, up, pull. Maybe something like that. So I'm sliding here with the major 7 thing. And then I play the arpeggio, I kind of pull and then I go up, up, pull, up, up. I just want to say it again, if you're just tuning in, I have a new single from my new album. It's called, it's called Pyramids, and it's going to be on all the streaming platforms, and I also am going to share the live uh, studio uh, video music clip that was captured. It's part of, uh, and, uh, it's part of my second album, and um, I wanted to make content to talk about uh, the release, but I had no ideas, so I said uh, maybe I'll, I should just go live. Um, so I have like uh, five or ten more minutes here, so if you have questions, let's just bring a bunch of questions and I'll try to answer like really fast, short answers. And um, if you haven't checked out my uh, courses on my website, wiseguitar.com, so it's now on 50% off. And um, yeah, and it's uh, it's I've been getting a lot of uh, great um, happy people joining, and um, yeah. Anyway, so more questions, just uh, and if not, that's uh, that's fine too, and uh, we can do that again sometime. And what else uh, I've been practicing lately? So so I've been the thing is uh, you know I've been doing this. YouTube thing a lot and I'm really enjoying it and I kind of got this feeling that I really want to play live so I don't know if you know any booking agent in Europe or whatever or anywhere um, so basically I, I'm putting a live group now that I'm, uh, it really forces me to sit down and learn my um, my own songs like relearn them and some of the songs were written for like quintet or uh, quartet and stuff. And I'm, I'm trying to be able to play them like just solo guitar. So, so what I kind of figured out is that, you know, a lot of the time I compose something like just the melody maybe. But then if it's a trio, I kind of need to maybe add some, some notes in there or some chords. Um, so it's, I find it like it's kind of challenging, but it's at the same time, it's really rewarding that like, I'm taking all the different materials that I'm learning and like creating like uh, something that I can just like 
so yeah so I, I i've been thinking like about that a lot like i might create some solo guitar videos and um some breakdowns of my uh my music and uh, and share them with you guys and um and uh also i don't know live like maybe who knows maybe we'll we'll, we'll get a chance to meet somewhere uh maybe maybe this live band will have uh some some touring going on soon which it can be really cool like uh you know also um for for you guys like maybe i can you know bring a cameraman with me or something and uh, we can make content on the on the road that's uh it's just like like thought i had um that is kind of i don't know i feel like that can be really nice do you ever uh, oh okay in a minor progression say d minor why does a d sharp major sound good because you play it with intention maybe but uh d sharp major why why that's that's cool thanks well what i think about here i actually see that d sharp Let's see. It does give you kind of like a Dorian vibe for a second there, but it has this flat nine to it. Wow, I think it, it because it kind of feels like a tension. You definitely have some tensions here. Okay, so, so most of the notes work, like if you think about this, the, the G works because it's the 4th degree, the 6th works because it's a 6 over a minor, it's perfect, and the root because it's the root. So just, wow, that's really nice, man, thanks. So just that flat 2 here, which also can work if you think about like Phrygian sounds. That's cool. So maybe like it can be kind of like you can work out kind of like uh, you can you can think about this E flat as like a um, C melodic minor, and then the D is just gonna be maybe um, also melodic minor. So I I gotta think about that, but it sounds cool. Nice. A anything can work, you know. Um, Basically everything works if it's in the right context and has the right energy to it, but at the same time um, It's important to kind of know it's kind of like cooking I, I think I compare it to cooking like to know when to use the spices and and when uh, to just leave it Anyway, it was super fun. Wow. What a chat. I hope I hope this chat can uh, can be saved for later because it's really cool. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can. I don't know. I really enjoyed the chat here. This was really fun, guys. Thank you so much. Let me know uh, if you're still here, and I'm looking forward to uh, to share my. <laughs> I'm, I'm literally screenshotting the the chat for. I don't know even why. So yeah. So thanks. Thanks so much. Um, yeah, new single, new album, exciting times. Uh, the course uh, is getting a lot of new members and uh, we're having lots of fun studying the fundamentals, unleashing our creativity together. And um, that's it, guys. Uh, lots of love. Enjoy music. Stay uh, happy and inspired and uh, one step at a time. And uh, stay in touch. I'll see you later, okay? Bye-bye.